If you enjoy listening to The Edge, support them by subscribing to The Edge on iTunes, Stitcher, and you can listen through the iHeartRadio app. Get busy listening. This is The Edge. The advantage, it means. They look, I just spit on me for no reason. That's horrible. Is there some comfort in uncertainty, do you think? You're a degenerate. Because Australian Shepherds need action. Wow. Yeah. This is The Edge. That's a self-loathing term that I use. For oh, got it. You're listening to The Edge with Mark Thompson. Very excited to have Sam Rubin. You know, Sam Rubin is a renowned entertainment reporter, not only in this country, but he does, and I've made this point to our audience before, he reports from Australia and from New Zealand and from London and from literally all around the English-speaking world. (laughs) He is revered, and his information gets out about the world of entertainment. So when he came to me and he said, I've got to get the word out in America about this thing, thing that I discovered in New Zealand, I said, well, w- what is it? And tell us about it. Well, well here's the thing, and I, I want to take uh, all credit where credit is due. I've actually been talking about this, I think, for almost a year, because I was first uh, made a although, as we're going to discover in just a few moments, people have been talking about this for years and years. But I became acquainted with it about a, a year ago. Uh, it's Manuka honey, which I may have already just said incorrectly. Now, I've been told it's Manuka honey. Manuka honey. Well, we'll, we'll learn the, uh, about it's that. It's M-A-N-U-K-A. Okay. And what is it? It is a particular honey that has particular properties that can only be grown and harvested in New Zealand only during a particular time of the year from particular places. There's a lot of specialized qualities to it, and it has all these wonderful benefits. There's a reason we sound uh, as fa- fabulous as we do. Unbelievably good for, for voice and throat overall wellness, winter well-being, you know, if you're like, oh, gosh, cold season is coming on. And then just a couple of sort of harmonic convergences. When I first heard about this, I was on a, I heard about it, and then I'm on an airplane, and I just happened to be sitting next to, like, the most beautiful gal alive. And I have my browser up to a page, the page for uh, Manuka Health, all about Manuka Honey. And this woman sitting next to me, literally unprompted, turns to me and she goes, that stuff's a miracle. And I'm like, really? It's a miracle? Why? She goes, it's the most amazing thing for your skin. And I was like, okay. So I sort of took that in. So it has all these amazing characteristics. And then here's the crazy thing. Uh, just this week, Good Morning America, of all people, do a huge story. And I wonder if they're going to say Manuka or Manuka. <laughs> but we'll figure that out. We're joined from New Zealand, which is the land of this Manuka honey. Kate Kember? Kember, yes. Hello. Hi, Kate Kember. Hello. (laughs) Mark, even though she's in New Zealand, you don't have to yell. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. (laughs) She's right there. I'm kind of a yeller, Kate. I apologize. And Dave Campbell is with you, correct? Correct. Hi, Dave. Hi, guys. It's great to have you both here because you fit into this whole program and description in important ways. Kate, what is it? Manuka or Manuka? Sam says Manuka. I said Manuka till I heard you say Manuka. Yes, so it is it is manuka, and that's because if it's, it's actually manuka is a Māori word, so you spell it with a line or a macron over the A, which makes it a long A, manuka. I don't have a macron on my phone, so when I text, <laughs> that's the dilemma. Uh, Kate is a big shot executive with the company Manuka Health that produces manuka honey, manuka honey. Uh, and Dave, this is so interesting, you actually work with the bees? Yeah, I do. I'm our general manager of apiculture, which means I'm our our beekeeper. And I work with a team of beekeepers across all of our hives, across the country, and uh, with a number of loyal, very loyal supplier beekeepers. So when I reference those various benefits, people have been talking about this stuff and those kinds of qualities for a very long time, have they not? They have. I think, so Manuka honey was first discovered in the 1980s, and it was discovered because it was uh, in, in the lab, it was responding or acting differently than other honeys. And uh, it was discovered to have unique antibacterial properties that were long-lasting and, most importantly, stable. Well, they, they fit into Hollywood perfectly. Yeah. I was, two, would, no, two things we yeah, need. Two things that you'll never find in Hollywood, <laughs> yeah, long-lasting and stable. stable right? yeah. So then to hear Sam talk about this, he talks about it like like I've heard people talk about Jesus. I mean, <laughs> it, he's over the moon for it. It's just it's changed my life. I, I bathe in it. I wipe it on my face. I drink it. I have. But, but truly, it, it seems as though the things that one traditionally associates with something like this, it, it transcends that. It's become sort of a supplement in other ways. Yeah, look, around the world, we sell to more than 45 countries around the world, and 
consumers in, in all of those countries are using it for a, a myriad of, of amazing reasons. We are, in New Zealand, we're actually really, really restricted in how we can talk about the benefits of Manuka honey, but what our consumers tell us, no matter whether it's uh, in Germany, that they're using it uh, for its perceived benefits around acid reflux and stomach uh, and digestive health, as well as general immunity, as Sam said, that winter well-being, as well as actually an energy source. So it's uh, not only, I suppose, the, the taking it inside, your, inside, but also on your skin and in wound care as well, which is where it's mostly researched. In, in terms of uh, wound care, interestingly enough, uh, and by, by the way, and we'll get more into this as we continue our conversation, you know, Amazon sells Manuka honey from Manuka Health. I'm going to get that wrong the whole time. No, that's okay. But in any end, you know, uh, several retailers here in the States have it available. But when you read those reviews, people say, oh, you know, someone in my family was suffering with a skin problem or a rash, and this was literally an immediate cure. And consequently, I mean, the, the Mark and I have here in the studio, you know, some jars of it. But in, in the, this is just an Mondo, aside. our engineer, we haven't even taken it out of the jar. He's already <laughs> looking at it. it. You're like uh, a new man, Mondo. Uh, but they, but there, there's a separate wound care division, right? I mean, hospitals carry this stuff. Absolutely. Wound care is the most researched area around Manuka honey. And, and you can find wound dressings or wound gels that are treating some pretty awful wounds. Actually, not only in humans, but also in animals as well. And a, a quick fact is that Dave is actually a veterinarian as well. So he knows a bit about this. But yes, in terms of um, wound healing, it, it is pretty incredible, the properties in the Manuka honey. It, if we get really technical, it not only debrides or kind of breaks down the dead tissue inside a wound, but also it's a very, very hydrating, which is why it's great for skin care. And it's that dual action that is actually healing wounds from the inside out. And that's why it is so special for wound care. Wow. Maybe you can I- explain to us, because I think so many of us here in the States are familiar with the cute little bear, you know, in the honey aisle that has the little nozzle on the top. How is this so distinct and so different from something like that? Sure, yeah. Sam, it, it, is, it is very different, and, and uh, I actually get a lot of uh, questions and inquiries particularly from the U.S., because Manuka honey is, is not like the liquid honey uh, that you guys get in a, in a beer. It's actually quite a solid honey, and it, it's a deep, rich, kind of caramel-type honey, and it's that density and that thickness that makes it quite unique. So it is a different product uh, for people to be buying off the shelf than the normal uh, runny honey that you'll get in a beer. And Dave, talk to us about from the hive or from the bee, or, I mean, there's all these particular properties and what, it can only be harvested six weeks a year from special trees. Run us through all of that. Okay, well, yeah, it's an, it really is a very special product because we do, as you say, only get six to eight weeks a year on any area of land where we have our beehives to harvest the manuka honey. And it comes from the nectar of our native or endemic manuka shrub, which is a small tree, and it grows in some of the most beautiful and remote areas of New Zealand. Uh, so we, we move our hives to these locations and... We have to get a combination of having the hives in at the right time, uh, that the, the, and reading the bloom of the of the manuka bush to make sure we place those hives there just when uh, when the, the manuka shrubs start flowering. How, how, do you, then, how do you read the bush? Ah, it's, um, it's a part art and part science. But what we do, our beekeepers and our land team are trained to do is read the read the bud of the of the manuka bush so as it grows it progresses through about four or five weeks of growth uh, from a very very small bud uh, right through to a full uh, bloom of of the flower Uh, but it is a very tiny wee flower Uh, it's about the size of our our little fingernail and um, yeah and so it is very precious and delicate so for those six weeks uh, we really try and nurture those bees and uh, and make sure that they have the most ability to fly and collect the nectar from the manuka bush. And do the bees, uh, this is literally like uh, seventh grade health, do the bees know what to do? Well, they've been doing it for centuries, so I'm, who am I to tell them how to do it better? <laughs> but, uh, you know, they do. And they, they, to be honest, we put them in areas where there's a, there was a very high density of these manuka shrubs, and you will be looking at a beautiful hillside covered in flower, and, and it will literally look like it's been snowing in the middle of summer. So the bees just have such a large opportunity of, of these flowers presented to them within, you know, within a kilometre of their beehive that they can very easily get to them and fly from flower to flower. And, and bush to bush to harvest it. And when, when that nectar starts flowing in the heat of summer, uh, we'll have 30 degree C 
Celsius days and you get just this profuse nectar flow. The bees, yeah, they go crazy on, on this stuff and they, they just pile it into their hives. How did you get into beekeeping? Uh, well, my great uncle Keith actually was a beekeeper uh, on our family farm and uh, when I was about 13, he uh, he said, Dave, I'm, I'm getting a bit too old for this, but I, but you're my man. So he gave me a dozen beehives and, and it really started from there. Did you do anything different as you became a, a, a beekeeper than he had done? In other words, did you refine his process at all? Uh, well, you see, the, beeke- the beekeeping code is such that when you've got a mentor, you, you don't want to challenge them too much in the early years. Uh, so, But straight away, being a, being a young guy, I was quite open to challenging his way of doing things. So, yeah, along the way, let's say, I adapted some of his practices. I asked this for a reason, because Sam had mentioned to me that uh, one of the things that distinguishes your company is that the process involving the bees is different than the process that involves bees with other companies that make honey. Right. Well, yeah, that is correct to a certain extent. We, you know, I know in the States you guys do things at scale, right? So when I talk about scale down under, it's, um, yeah, it's maybe not quite as big, but yeah, we're running over 20,000 beehives to, to collect this nectar and a large team of over 50 beekeepers to help with this task. And so we have to really have some yeah we we work with our annual production cycle and we do document exactly what we want to do every month of that of that year and it allows us to continuously improve our processes every every season uh, but it also means that uh, I can you know I can be assured that all of those beehives are being the tra- being treated the same as just my my dozen beehives that I had on my great uncle Keith's farm because all of our beekeepers know exactly how to nurture the hives along at the same standard together Wow. One of the things that is particular to Manuka Health and the Manuka honey that that you produce and distribute worldwide, this idea of being able to trace the individual, we call them jars, I think you call them pots, the the, the thing we get off the shelf? or Yes, the pot. The pot. The pot or the jar. The pot or the jar. But you can trace the specific jar back to the specific beekeeper and and the group of bees? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we've introduced, and again, this is something that my great-uncle Keith wasn't doing because he didn't have a cell phone way back then, but we use an app that we have built uh, that is our GIS system. So it overlays geospatial information with, with where, exactly where our hives are sited, uh, and so that allows us to, uh, every time we visit beehives, log, log that visit, uh, so each beekeeper will have this on his phone, and, um, and then we can batch the information, uh, we batch the honey uh, in, by apiary site uh, and that is carried right through our, our uh, b- both our extraction and then our packing process through through our plant. So it's very easy to trace back to uh, yeah, each beautiful land site where we, where we produce this stuff. Kate, if, if these jars are called pots, what do you call pots there? <laughs> <laughs> a pan. We call them a pan. Oh, you call pan. them pans. I see. Okay. Uh, the, <laughs> you know, if we were talking to the two of you and you were winemakers, we would say, oh, this year was a particularly good year. This year was a less good year. Is there a consistency to the quality harvest after harvest? Well, that's part of the magic of it, I guess, and and so we do see some seasonal differences, and particularly in the mouthfeel of the of the honey, uh, and so yeah, it does depend on the exact temperatures and and locations around the country where the honey comes from. But overall, we manage to create a, a consistent uh, a consistency with our honey, and and Kate will explain a little bit more about how we we grade our honey to 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 build that consistency. But you you certainly you know Manuka honey. T- typically has a almost a very um, earthy uh, o- overtone to it, uh, and, um, and and almost a, it's a tongue numbing when you when you have it straight off the hive or straight out of the pot, you will get that almost a numbing sensation when you when you consume a high grade of manuka honey. You can really feel it doing its thing on your tongue. Wow, wow, that's really interesting. There are no antibiotics or additives like sugar that are associated with manuka. No, absolutely not. So in fact. The active ingredient, the special ingredient in Martin, which is very natural, M- MGO or methyl glyoxal, is absolutely natural and it's a combination of the bee and the manuka nectar flower from the flower and so it's 100% natural but it actually behaves in a way that is stronger than any antibiotic in the world. So there's no known resistance to methyl glyoxal from, from manuka honey whereas you know in our modern times we're experiencing resistance to antibiotics all around the world and so that's certainly proven by science. 
And I think one special thing, uh, Dave, about about the honey, uh, the manuka honey from New Zealand, is the fact that your beekeeping practices we don't use antibiotics as part of it. No, absolutely not. So that's um, that is special to to New Zealand and how we manage our beehives. Um, you know, they are beans. You can't. You can't get them. Well, one thing that Good Morning America focused on, A, first you heard these fantastic benefits. And then I think there was a bit of almost a a buyer beware because you guys have explained uh, quite wonderfully why uh, I'm still trying to do it. Monica. Monica Honey from Monica Health is so special. But there are other brands that do this, that, that market Monica Honey, but all brands are not alike. And there, there is a distinction between their efficacy and their, and their potency. And, and I, I know there was a point about how important it is that it's not only harvested in New Zealand, but that it's potted, it's put into the jar in New Zealand, which is not always the case, right? That's right, Sam. I think, you know, as, as people have discovered Manuka honey around the world, uh, it's, it's grown very quickly. And, and what you can find is, unfortunately, there are companies around the world that will export Manuka honey from New Zealand and then repot it and maybe blend it down, uh, but still claim for it to be manuka honey. So there are a few things to, to look out for. As Dave talked about, the the uh, the special magical compound in manuka honey is something called methoglyoxal, methylglyoxal, or MGO we call it for short. And uh, that is that is the, the compound that you're really looking for uh, when you're buying your manuka honey. So manuka will come in a various um, number of grades. Uh, so you have kind of entry level uh, types of manuka honey that might be good for having on your toast or a replacement uh, sweetener. As you then uh, go up the what we call the grades, uh, you'll have uh, different potencies of manuka honey. But that's based on the, the MGO rating inside it. And unfortunately, not all manuka honey uh, uses the same rating system at the moment, so it can be confusing out there. But the things that we do recommend you look for is uh, that your the honey the manuka honey that you're buying that it is measured on methoglyoxal or MGO. Now there's a couple of rating systems that that do that. We also are part of an association called the uh, the UMF association, uh, and uh, the UMF also measures based on uh, methoglyoxal as part of uh, a number of compounds they measure on. But you're also looking uh, for that reassurance of a company that is. Uh, from New Zealand and is uh, processing their honey and potting it or jarring it in New Zealand, uh, because by doing so we have to we have to meet some very strict export guidelines, uh, and it will be uh, you'll be assured of that if you've bought your pot uh, from New Zealand. Uh, and then look, there 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 are a lot of companies doing this. We uh, I think you can probably hear from from Dave's voice. We're very passionate about what we do, and we take a lot of care. Uh, and we have specialised facilities uh, in New Zealand, uh, right back from uh, Dave and his team uh, through to uh, our extraction plants and also our uh, where we pot the honey. Where we're very very carefully looking after this honey. You know, it's it's so special that it can be heat damaged and and heat treated along the way if you don't know what you're doing. So there are a number of tests that companies who control the whole supply chain will be doing to make sure that uh, the honey is as close to what it is in the hive as it ends up in the jar. And that's what we're so passionate about and making sure our consumers get. Yeah, it sounds like quite a rigorous process. So Good Morning America did what test? What conclusions did Good Morning America come up with? So Good Morning America was was really looking at the the wonder of this product and why it's growing around the world and, and why does it command the prices that it does. And they did do some testing to understand levels of methoglyoxal and, and a few other tests along the way to, to really make sure that consumers are getting what they think they're getting. Uh, and I think... You know, really what uh, Good Morning America was trying to do was to to educate consumers on the wonders of this product, but also to make sure they're doing their homework to know what they're getting. And then in terms of preserving the efficacy of it, one thing I'd like to talk about with, with both of you a little bit is, all right, we know about it. We know what people are saying about it. Uh, we know the efforts that uh, Monica Health goes through to make sure their Monica honey is pristine. For example, I, I tell you what, I, I had a conversation on the phone with the president of the company, with Dave and uh, Kate's boss, wow. very uh, hale and hearty guy named John. Uh-huh. And I'm like, how do you, I want to do it the way you do it. How do you take it? And he described a heaping teaspoon in a glass of warm water, but not boiling water. 
Talk to us a little bit about that. What what is the best way? And that that by the way, I've come to enjoy that tremendously. Mm. Um, and I do it as sort of a, a daily ritual. I think John does it twice a day in the morning and in the evening. I just do it in the evening. Uh, but but talk to us about you want to know the best delivery system best re- for this precisely right. right. Sure. So uh, as a Kiwi or a New Zealander, uh, we've grown up uh, taking manuka honey off a spoon. So we we call it a teaspoon a day, uh, and that's 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 one way to do it. As uh, as John does, our boss John, uh, and uh, actually a lot of Asian cultures and Chinese cultures, they mix it with warm water, as Sam said. So really, we don't want the water to be boiling hot because that will start to ruin these this special methagloxal or MGO. But warm water so that it dissolves the honey, uh, and then taking that as a as a drink a day or uh, a couple of times a day will will definitely uh, keep everything uh, in in working order. It's a, it's like the STP for your, no, uh, for your right. body. It's kind of the, the uh, biological lubrication of some kind. So you're saying either direct teaspoonful or dropping it into that warm water. Now warm water. that becomes... And even with lemon. Uh, so, you know, if, if you have a cold coming on, a soothing drink of lemon and honey. This honey's just got a little bit of extra kick in it. That's a nice winter well-being product. But look, we uh, we also have some amazing smoothie recipes on our site that uh, people mix it into their porridge. So there's there's many ways that you can have it. And it's, yeah. it's, it's amazing on on muesli baked baked in the muesli. Or uh, you know, my kids they they're always they call it nuka actually. So we've just got the manuka piece, but they, these guys call it nuka, uh, and and they reach for it whenever they've got a. a cut or a scrape or um, you know, and every day on their porridge. Uh, Dave and I have uh, very similar aged children and we uh, we both have to hide our blue pots of honey because as soon as the pantry <laughs> opens and they spot, they spot the blue pot, they're, they're jumping up and down wanting it. Oh, uh, you, you reference these various cultures, uh, the, popular in Germany and in, in certain Asian cultures. How many countries is it available in or, or is Manuka Health's uh, Manuka honey available in? Yeah, so we uh, we export to more than 45 countries around the world. Uh, and uh, being uh, of over 10 years old as a company, we really we really have stretched around the world. So we're we're very well known uh, for for what we do uh, and have a very loyal following to that. And it's really interesting when uh, you look at the ways that uh, consumers are taking manuka honey around the world and and what they're taking them for. for. It's uh, it's it's varied, but there's also some commonality. So that uh, that perceived uh, support for general health uh, and immunity, uh, for digestive health, no matter whether it's uh, Chinese cultures who understand a lot about um, the stomach being the centre of of health and well-being, or whether it is the Germans uh, looking at it for support for reflux. Uh, you know that they're they're very passionate about the way they take it. And of course, there is um, the wound, the wound side of it as well. So, you know, lots of lots of New Zealanders will actually have it in their first aid kit, and and I know I do with my children. The first thing I do when the kids fall off the bike is I'll actually get some manuka honey and, and put it over the put it over the scratch uh, and put a band aid over the top of it. It's we're, amazing, amazing how fast it can heal. We're, uh, we're of course wound. talking talking to you both uh, from from Hollywood. What about this beauty element? I've had facialists tell me it's the most remarkable thing for you know for men or women who want to rehydrate to use it as a facial remedy essentially. Yes, so if you if you take the principles of why it's been so researched for wound care, the same thing applies to skin. Uh, so it's both the the antibacterial side of it, uh, healing uh, skin issues, but then also that uh, manuka honey is very hydrating. Uh, so it's those two things together that that really uh, create create a glow, uh, and you'll see a lot of uh, products that are starting to use it uh, as an ingredient uh, for acne. Uh, but yes, as a, as a mask, if you if you remember to put a mask of manuka honey on every night, you'll wake up with golden glowing skin. Wow, well, I, I I wonder if it could heal the pain I feel from feeling like I'm so average looking. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe the glow could actually take I, me I, to a better place. I was going to say, I don't, I don't know if they can make the claim. It it will do the best with what you have. I see. As I opposed see. to... You can't ask for any miracles. Right. <laughs> uh, tell me about the bees, Dave. Tell me, uh, let me just go, are the, bee, the bees, I hear that your bees are better treated than our bees, for example, in the honey production business in the States. Oh, gosh. Well, look, that's a bit tough because we do know a number of great American beekeepers and they love their girls as well, just as much as we do. But... 
you know, you guys are doing different things in the States with almond pollination and, and you know, large migrational beekeeping. So we're very focused with, with our bees on on our manuka uh, production. We do lots of other beautiful monofloral um, honey types as well down here. But we, yeah, we're very focused on that honey production. Uh, and uh, so there's not as much moving around of hives and um, and in as much pushing them into pollination as perhaps uh, perhaps it happens over in the states. And the flower that you talk about, this particular flower that you know, you have this finite period every year to to uh, to harvest, uh, that is unique to New Zealand and hasn't been transferred like so many other things have. It hasn't been exported that flower uh, to other countries. Well, largely correct, yes. Manuka only occurs naturally in New Zealand, uh, and it is the, it's the nursery crop of our beautiful native uh, bush out here. And so it, um, it, it grows literally like a weed and on all, all over our country, uh, but, it, but it has every seed pod has over 2,500 seeds that are wind-blown. Uh, so it's very easy to get your hands on on these seeds, and I think there's a couple of people um, that uh, that might have um, taken some offshore. I see. Yeah. Certainly, no nowhere near to the scale uh, that that we have uh, here. And I think that the thing to add to that is that it's not only the tree itself, but it's the it's the New Zealand conditions that make mm. you know that that all culminate in, in what is the strength and power of the manuka honey. You know, it's the strong UV lights that we have down here, it's the, the rugged winds and the clean soils and the clean air. It's, it's all of those things in combination with, of course, the bee that, that really make manuka honey special to New Zealand. Look, you just would not believe how beautiful some of the places we have beehives, and, and you guys have got an open invite down here, right? I'll take you out, we'll look at some hives and, and look at the view, but it is, some days I have to pinch myself, we're heading up, um, heading up a, the side of a a, a hill or overlooking the beautiful coastline we've got these lovely clear blue skies ocean breezes uh, just that smell of the of the forest coming through the smell of the hives um you know it, it all adds up we get those lovely dry summer weathers uh that that all all, all form part of this so it's a it's a pristine environment down here and that ends up being um, being incorporated into into a man, um, manuka honey. I remember I've been to New Zealand. I was oh. there to ski, and I left Los Angeles in August. It was excruciatingly hot. Right. And I go down there, and there's snow. I skied the Remarkables. There's actually a, the mountain area called the Remarkables. One of the things about New Zealand, it's spectacularly Beautiful. scenic. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's un, It really is. It's like a postcard around every corner. No, we, we, we can't persuade the two of you to, to move to the, the U.S., I think not, right? <laughs> Oh, look, as Dave said, we've always got an invitation for you down here. And I must say, my, my better work stories are days uh, when I've been able to go out with Dave. Uh, and he has taken me up a enormous mountain, which uh, looked both over the coastline and back uh, towards the, the central North Island. And uh, as Dave said, when you're in absolute uh, peace and, and serenity with, with really all you're hearing is the wind blowing and, and the bees buzzing, uh, you really think you've got a pretty good work life. Uh, you guys have several retail partners here in the U.S. As people hear this here, is there a best way to get it, or, or I imagine there are a variety of ways to get it? So there's a variety of ways, of, uh, of ways to get it. Uh, we are uh, available in a number of uh, independent health stores. You can, you can uh, find us on Amazon as well. Um, so yeah, I'd I'd say look for local health food and, and retail chain stores. You can find us in Costco in some regions. Yes, yeah, so both online and offline, you'll be able to find Manuka Health. The Manuka Honey from Manuka Health. Before we say uh, so long, and we appreciate this so much, it's been so interesting and so informative. When people first come across this, it is uh, certainly at a different uh, price point than this regular, you know, joke we joked about uh, honey that's, you know, in a squeezy jar. Um it, it costs more, but, but I think, as, as you guys have demonstrated, it's worth more. Do you think that's a fair assertion? Oh, look, a- absolutely. Uh, and, and the old saying of you get what you pay for is, is something to um, you know, always think about with this as well. There, as I said, there are a lot of people who uh, you know, want to take advantage of, of this beautiful product. Uh, but there are a few checks that you can quickly do to, to make sure that you, you're buying the real deal because 
you know that it, it does cost it does cost a bit of money so what we'd say again is check your rating system and that that is based on methoglyoxal or we say MGO for short could be UMF but one that is rating on the methoglyoxal secondly check that you are buying a product that is made, produced and potted in New Zealand. It will have the export certifications that we have to have when you leave New Zealand. And thirdly, you know, really look for a for a company who has control of their supply chain, who is nurturing that honey all the way through, uh, from the hive all the way through to the jar. Yeah. I got goosebumps. Yeah, I the way she said it. Said that, I know. That That's was nurturing it, it all was the way through nurturing. the supply chain. Yeah. It was terrific. All right, to review, it is going to make us better looking. <laughs> or, uh, or, or or enhance whatever we already have. Uh, it has these uh, fantastic properties, throat and voice, uh, overall wellness, uh, digestion, et cetera. And then, you know, th- th- we're talking primarily about these pots or jars, but there are other ways to get it, including one that looks to me like a ketchup packet. They call it a satchel. And Kate and Dave, what about that? People will, in effect, use it for an energy shot, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so one of my favorite pastimes when I'm not playing with my beehives is mountain biking downhill as fast as I can. Uh, and of course, to get up that hill to start with takes a fair bit of energy. So I used to reach for sort of more um, more of those commercially available goos and energy yeah, energy packets. Um, but uh, nowadays with our snap pack uh, sachet, I just uh, have a handful of those in my backpack. And as I'm heading up the mountain, I just um, I just throw those in my mouth and, and yeah, it gets me up. There. Now it's for mountaineering. That takes the place of five-hour energy drinks. That's what we have here. There's no... Th- oh, right. It's got to be about eight billion times more yeah, helpful gonna, oh my than five-hour energy right. drinks. I feel like every time I use five-hour energy, I'm shaving years off my life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A little bit more natural, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. well, that's cool. That's kind of a cool little twist, huh? Yeah. So these uh, these these sachets are uh, what we say is, is on the go. So you can have your Manuka honey with you wherever you go. And uh, as Dave said, it's, it's a great little energy kick either throughout your day or, or during sport uh sam in closing i would like now in front of everyone for you to actually say the name of the honey <laughs> manuka that's it isn't it no. that's it and nice job sam yeah, very good <laughs> I've, i live and learn it's been a delight dave and kate thank you so much I had no idea. All I had was the enthusiasm of Sam, and it, it's infectious. <laughs> so we're so glad that we could. I mean, you're clearly getting a really great bit of publicity on this, given the fact that Good Morning America is talking about it. Sam has brought it to our show. So uh, congratulations on the word getting out. Thank you, Mark. Look, we're really passionate about what we do. So uh, the more hands that we can get these blue jars into, you know, the, the happier we'll be. Well said for you both. Uh, we will follow up on that invitation. Uh, yeah, indeed. To, uh, you're going to see a knock on the door. Yes. I'll be like, kids, move aside. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're coming in. Uh, thank you both so much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Sam. All right, look Kate. forward to seeing you down here, guys. I love that plan. Right, let's go. Bye, guys. <laughs> There's a link on our website to the Manuka Health products. Edge-show.com is the website. Edge-show.com. And in this episode, there is a link to open up that world of Manuka Health. Thanks again to Sam, and thanks to our friends from New Zealand. Until next time, bye-bye. You're listening to The Edge. Join us on the web at edge-show.com.